Okay. Uh, moving forward to uh, Kansas State, uh, it, it's uh, if you remember last year when I was talking about Kansas State, uh, I think they were like top two or three in the country at that at that point in time and you know there's a lot of the things that I said about them then is going to be about the absolute same thing that I'm going to say about them now even though they're in a different place they're I think they were six and oh seven and oh it doesn't really matter last year at this point they're 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 two and four at at this point this year but much of the same things that I say about them is going to be the exact same thing that I said about them last year um, you know, it starts with Bill Snyder and the, the job that he's done as, um, as, a, as a head coach and the, the program that he's built o- over, you know, his 22 years that he's been there. I know he was gone for a few years, but uh, got it right back on track uh, fairly quick, obviously, with, their, with their, their record that's been the last couple of years. But a uh, tremendous football coach that, that does a lot of things for our profession uh, you know that does a lot of things for his kids and start, you know, in in in, in building character, uh, being a very disciplined football team on all three sides of the ball. Uh, just just getting kids to play with tremendous effort. Uh, there, there's a little different of a, uh, a a vibe this year from because we have to go there to play as opposed to them come here. They they played a phenomenal football game when they came here last year. And finished the year very strong. Uh, I, I, I've been to Kansas State several times, and they've built that up from uh, from nothing uh, to uh, what 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 you see today. It's a heck of a place to play a college football game. It's going to be 53,000 people there. They're loud. Uh, they're rowdy. Uh, their student section's great, which is right behind uh, our bench. Uh, it, it's a it's a challenging place to go play. All, all, all places. All all. Venues in the Big 12 are, are challenging places to go play, so th- this will be a tremendous challenge for our football team. Um, o- offensively, they, uh, you know, they're searching a little bit for an identity at this point in time. Uh, at, you know, much like a lot of teams, including ourselves, you lose a quarterback of the the um, the caliber of what they had last year. It's going to take some time before they get into a rhythm. They've been they've been searching with the, the the two kids that they've been playing. It looks to me like they're settling in on D- Daniel Sams a little bit. They're they're two different type guys. They do different things with their scheme with the two of them. We'll have to prepare for both. Uh, but uh, you know Daniel Sams presents problems from an athletic uh, point of view. He's their leading rusher. Um, uh, you know, averages over six yards per carry, has, has, has ran the ball 86 times. We're going to have to keep him in check. Uh, he, he's six foot two, 210 pounds, really fast, very athletic. Uh, will 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 hurt you with his feet. He controlled the clock. The last the last game they played two weeks ago against Baylor, he controlled the game. He controlled the clock. Uh, you know, and, and and did a phenomenal job of keeping them in the football game. Uh, I anticipate their receivers to be back. They didn't play against Baylor, uh, the the Lockett and the Thompson kid that uh, have been there going on. I guess this is their third year now, uh, Thompson's uh, senior year. But they're they're smaller guys that play on the outside that are dynamic. They're fast. They stretch the field. They they make plays. They're great in the return game. We're anticipating them being back, uh, you know. But it, it does kind of start with that quarterback as far as him. Uh, Making things happen with his feet. If they got those receivers back, they may end up putting the other quarterback in there and throwing to those guys all the time. So we're going to have to adjust. You know, they, you can tell they're disciplined. You can tell they're well coached. They, 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 they play hard. Uh, they're searching because of, of of trying to find what their identity is because they're playing different people, and we just got to recognize that and coach up on the go when we find out what their plan is going to be. Uh, de- defensively, they lost a lot of seniors last year. Uh, we're, we're, we're we're pretty good last year. I thought, you know, defensively this year it looks the same on film with different people. Uh, they're they're not getting up a ton of points. You know, they're only giving up about 25 points a game. Uh, getting off the field uh, on, on third down, relatively good. Uh, only giving up 150 yards a game rushing. Um, you know, they they it's the schemes the same as it as it was. Um, just a well coached, disciplined football team that plays with a bunch of effort. You know, holds holds their gaps, gets off blocks, and makes plays. So, uh, really, doesn't matter who they are. You know, if it's the same people as last year, it'd look the same as what you see on film. Uh, the speed of it's not quite as good, but I do see them getting better and better each and every week that they've played, which I would expect nothing else from 
from a, from a Kansas State coached uh, uh, football team. Uh, special teams uh, will be the biggest challenge of the year. Um, you know, their 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 special teams guy, Coach Snyder's son Sean, has been there for a while with them, and is is a solid. They have no weaknesses special teams wise. Uh, we we need to try to battle and break even. Uh, they 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 have, you know, their punters averaging 43 yards a, a, a kick. Their 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 kicker is extremely solid. Uh, got the best snapper in the league. They're good in the return game. Uh, you can tell that they spend a, just a bunch of time in, in, in special teams and there is no weaknesses and we'll have our work cut out for us. That, that's been one thing that I've noticed with us over the last couple of games is continuing to improve on special teams and we'll need to continue to do that. So need, need to, uh, it would be a big challenge for us. Disappointed in the loss last week, like I mentioned after the game, thought it was a, uh, it, thought it was a game that we could have won. Uh, we got to bounce back from it. We got to move forward. And... Uh, you know, there, there's never going to be any any uh, easy games, uh, so to speak. So that's welcome to the Big 12. That's what we signed up for, and and uh, got it. Got to play a, a, a tough uh, tough opponent on the road. So with that, take some questions. How much does their offense change depending on which quarterbacks in the game? It changes. It it, it changes. Uh, I think if you look at ours, it doesn't matter which one was in there. It's going to be relatively the same offense. What they do with, uh, you know, with uh, the Waters kid, uh, he, you know, they they go a lot of empty. They spread it around. I mean, they even go empty with Sam's. They do that, but it just it's a little bit more of a pass game. Spread it around, let him throw it around and distribute the ball. And then with Sam's, he's just a bigger run threat. You know, so the schemes and stuff that they do in there with the different personnel is going to change. So. You got to prepare for it all. You know, you you don't know. You, you know, if you, if you just take what they did against Baylor, you can do that. But then they have the potential to do the other stuff as well. So by getting those receivers back, and and he's tight-lipped on injuries. You guys think I'm bad with it? He's he's very tight-lipped with injuries. You don't know if they're going to be back or not. But you got to prepare for it. And it's just, statistically, your pass defense was really good the first five games. Big numbers the last two. As you watch film, can you pinpoint why it was it just opponent? I mean, obviously they were very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I was talking with Tony about this earlier, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You look at that Baylor and Texas Tech are pocket passers, and and they they they're pretty good up front. Texas Tech was better up front than I anticipated. Uh, they played well up front. Baylor was 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 really sound up front. Different, a little different scheme. They ran the ball, ran the ball, ran the ball, and then play action is 48, 58, 68 yards deep, you know. But um, a little bit different scheme. But yeah, they they were more sit in the pocket and and, and throw the ball around, uh, and they're really good at it. Texas Tech's uh, w w w has improved, you know, each week with it, but. Uh, you know, uh, Kansas State's probably a little bit more like, you know, with the running game with the quarterback. You know, the teams that we played prior to Baylor were, were all against quarterbacks that were runners. You know, JW would run around and and uh, Brown over at Maryland would run around and the Oklahoma guy would run around. So we're facing teams that were, were, were running the quarterback a good bet. And, and we showed that we defended that pretty good. You know, we just got to work on it, you know. Coach, I know you like to uh, focus on one game at a time, but now that you're kind of past the halfway point, have you talked with the guys at all about needing the three wins to get to a bowl game, or is it strictly Kansas State at this point? It's Kansas State right now. You know, I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, a bowl game's important, but a fourth win is a little more important at this point. So, um, you know, we're, we, we haven't got to the point where I feel like we need to talk about motivation to win. I think the motivation to win is there. Uh, if you're not able to execute things, then you're not going to win. So we, we're, we're continuing to focus on being able to execute better. Uh, offensively, I think we executed better last week, and, and I was extremely disappointed with how we finished the game, especially offensively. Uh, but, but prior to that, we were moving the ball better, and we got into a rhythm and a flow that hadn't existed in, 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 in some of the pre in, in most uh, of the of the previous games. So. You know, and then defensively, we got to continue to improve. Uh, we, we, we've shown where we can uh, uh, play at a high level. We've shown where we can play at a very low level. So we, we need consistency on defense. We need to continue to improve offensively. 
uh, and get into a rhythm, and then we need to continue to glue it together with special teams and, and, and get better at what we're asking them to do, which will lead to a victory. And then as you get closer, you know, obviously uh, going to a bowl game is, uh, is, is one of our goals uh, that, that we have as a program, and we, we obviously want to meet that goal. You said a week ago the third down conversions have been atrocious was the word you used. Uh, did you see some improvements at least for two and a half quarters uh, on Saturday? Yeah, it was better. I, I, it, it was better. I, I can't remember the, the, the stat on it, but it, it, was, it, it was clearly better until we got to the fourth quarter. And, and everybody's like, well, why your, your four or five drives, why did those four or five drives look different than the previous seven drives? Well, we just didn't execute, you know, and, and the game was on the line, and I, I saw Texas Tech up their game and execute their calls a little better than we did. You know, wh whether you want to call them good calls or bad calls, I mean, you can put the calls on me. I mean, that's, that's, that's fine. We, we just we didn't execute. We didn't execute on all three sides of the ball is as good as we needed to. They did. They were able to win the game. Sounds like you think uh, Kansas State's better than their record. Yeah, they are. You know, and I think we're better than our record. You know, it, it, And if you just look at their previous three games, I mean, that first one against North Dakota State, I mean, that happens. North Dakota State's a good football team. I mean, I think we're all aware of that. You know, But the last three, you know, at Texas having a chance to win, at Oklahoma State having a chance to win, at home against Baylor after they throttled us, had a chance to win. I mean, they're a good football team. They're, 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 they're searching. Uh, you know, nobody wants to hear an excuse about not winning a game because of level of competition, whether it's at West Virginia, whether it's at Kansas State. Uh, nobody wants to hear the excuse about not winning a game because of inexper inexperience, you know, whether it's at Kansas State or whether it's at West Virginia. You know, you, that nobody wants to hear those excuses, so wind up, get better, and try to go win. What did they do to slow down Baylor? What what did they do so effectively, and how does that play into how they might match up against you guys? Stop the run. I mean, they're, they 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 got they're they're thick up front in the middle, and they play with just tremendous technique and tremendous effort. And and you know it, they're they're going to give you five in the box. You know, uh, they gave Baylor ba they gave Baylor five in the box, which so did we, and they ran right through us, right? But they, did, you know, Baylor does a good job of coming right off the ball and 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 moving us. That you heard me talk about moving the line of scrimmage. They did not move the line of scrimmage against Kansas State, so th that's going to pose problems. Or not, uh, hopefully, it doesn't pose problems. Hopefully, uh, we can handle that. But it's going to be a challenge for us up front. On, on, on blocking their guys. They do a great job with their D-line and their backers of filling, of, of holding their gaps on the line of scrimmage and not letting them establish the line of scrimmage. They, 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 they played physical against Baylor. And what did you see out of the line then last week? Were you, were you happy with? Our guys? Yeah, yeah I, thought, I, thought we, uh, I thought we improved. I thought we improved up front. Did, didn't, again, didn't finish the game like, like it, with a winning effort. But we we improved, and you know, Texas Tech was giving us the run. They were giving in the, us the numbers. And in the past, we we've shown that we're, where we still can't handle that. Uh, but we you know we rushed for what 170 in the first half or whatever. So, um, and it's not just run game. Our pass protection is getting better, and we we, we improved with that. We we got to keep improving. Coach, it's been kind of a, a rough year for uh, former Gundy offensive coordinators, um, term head coaches, especially Tom at Southern Miss and Larry at UNC, have uh, coming from like the same coaching tree, I guess. Um, have, have their struggles surprised you? And uh, having success in your first year, you know, would you have like any words of encouragement for them? I, you know, I know. You know, I know those guys pretty well, and they're going to do a good job. I haven't, I haven't followed what they're doing. I've got my own problems. So we're going to, we're going to worry about what's happening here in Morgantown. So, what's your philosophy on kick return? Score. <laughs> okay, here's what happened with kick return. I know where you're going with this because we got, we got pinned inside the ten. What three times? Well, but, uh, Tech did a good job of pinning it, which we knew they would. So if they pin it, you go that way, and you're going to get to the 20 to the 25, which we did, and then it just it just converges and you stop. So what you do is you go, you do that, and if you're happy being on the 20 or 25, and after we got pinned inside the 10 our second time or our third time, I said, we can't try this anymore. But what you try to do is 
is when they pin you, you try to go here and then you try to fan it back to the field. And if there's about four guys back here that got to get their blocks, if one of those four miss their blocks, there's a free guy that can get you inside the 10. But if you make that block, you got a chance to score. Uh, so we tried that once, got pinned, tried it another time, got pinned. And I can't remember if there was a third time or not, but that's when we made the decision just to go straight with it and get it to the 20 or the 25 and be happy with that and move on. How about when a guy feels it in the end zone? I mean, is, is there a distance where you say don't return it? A couple, from- a couple yards into it's okay. You know, it, and, and when they changed the rule where that the, the – you know, they have to – they get the five-yard rule where they can't take a 15-yard start. You know, that, that – that I saw a lot of teams backing that threshold up to where they were catching it five, six, seven yards deep and still bringing it out. Uh, what we've told our guys is if you're a step or two in, then go ahead and take it out. Um, you know, five yards to me is too risky. couple offensive linemen uh, injuries toward the end of the game. Any update on, on uh, Pat especially? Yeah, they're good. They worked out here earlier. I anticipate, They were in the weight room this morning lifting and all that stuff. So I anticipate them uh, being fine. It's, you know, tech, tech was physical. It's a physical game in the trenches, you know. I mean, there's going to be times where guys get nicked up. If they can't play through it, then you got you got to get the guys like Marquise went in and got quality snaps and Tyler Orlowski went in and got quality snaps and and Adam Pankey went in and got quality snaps. Those guys need to be able to go in there and play a series uh, and, and keep it going without without taking us taking a step back. And they got better last week, I thought. So they need to continue to do that. And you do anything differently road trip wise this year, or I should say this week, in comparison to what you did previous to Baylor and Maryland? Uh, well, Mer- Maryland was the bus trip, you know, over, uh, you know, we, we always try to get to the hotel at the same time, whether it's home, whether it's away, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll probably get over there about five o'clock, you know, and, 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 and uh, we're, you know, we're, we're, where we're staying is not far, so it's not much travel time. Like Baylor was all that transition time, so we had to, you know, ma- make some adjustments for that. We're going to... We're, we're, we're going to send uh, some operations people to the airport after before the game's over to make sure TSA is there to where we can get on the plane and get back at a decent hour so we can have a normal Sunday schedule. I'm sure you would appreciate that as well. 